older kitties, I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch with the little red devil. It's completed. The one that I did a video overview recently. And I'm gonna tell you the story of this amp, how I was making it, how I was designing it, what problems I had to overcome when doing this project because uh, it's, uh, it's basically an uh, amplifier that was supposed to be quite uh, inexpensive. Uh, the materials um, were mostly second-hand vintage parts. An enclosure came from uh, an uh, electronic de device, probably some uh, communication interface or some modem. I should have some device uh, with a uh, similar Enclosure, one moment please, let me grab it. <coughs> Looks like those uh, enclosures were kind of popular in the 90s and uh, early 2000s. This is the Pearl uh, signal generator. It goes even uh, even further than uh, the 90s because it was made in 1980s. 1999. I was just three years old when it was made. Basically, the same kind of enclosure with uh, with two halves. Um, and uh, a uh, front and back panel that goes into the groove uh, in the in the sheet metal with uh, with rounded corners. So what I was uh, going to do with uh, with this amplifier, I uh, also uh, had to work with uh, vintage uh, transformers that uh, are not as uh, easy to attach to the chassis uh, like uh, like with modern transformers uh, you mostly buy a uh, transformer with a uh, bell and uh, a cover that uh, makes the, the thing look nice um, when you lay it on the chassis use a uh, square hole to put the put one side of um, of the spool so that you've got all the wires uh, coming out uh, on the bottom part of the chassis here those transformers um, first of all they have an air gap because those are transformers for single-ended amplifiers. Uh, that kind of a transformer uses an uh, air gap. And that means that uh, you don't just uh, put uh, those uh, EI uh, laminations uh, from both sides like, like this. You have to put all of them uh, on one side and the eye laminations uh, on the other side. And um, that's not really me mechanically stable without an uh, outside uh, bracket uh, on the transformer's core, like, uh, like we saw on the video when I was putting the amplifier back together. So uh, it has uh, a uh, mounting bracket, uh, has to be attached to the chassis and uh, it would be a little bit uh, cumbersome to put them above the chassis uh, I would have to use a um, larger box to house them and I didn't really want that. Also, I wanted the, the construction to be with uh, a um, detachable upper part of the enclosure and chassis uh, 
I partly got inspired by the Yakin uh, MC10L amplifier that I was um, build, not building, but uh, modifying and uh, repairing for the same customer. That uh, it also had a uh, top part with uh, with the covers for all the transformers, um, both output and power. And uh, after removing a, a bunch of screws, uh, the cover came off and uh, and I had um, the access to all the electronics inside. This, uh, this also prevents uh, any screws uh, for attaching the tube sockets, um, that kind of stuff, uh, from being visible but uh, but then I would have to use uh, a sub chassis uh, like you saw on this one a metal plate um, with uh, all the holes uh, lined uh, correctly with uh, with the inner with the top part and uh, also then the bottom part of um, of the enclosure had uh, something like uh, threaded rivets um, for attaching the original PCB. I used them uh, to attach uh, the bottom mounting plate where I attached the transformers, I attached the sub-chassis and uh, also attached uh, the power supply filter PCB. Not exactly PCB because um, this is uh, this is a uh, perf board, but uh, the the filter board and uh, also um, the control circuit board uh, on um, on uh, threaded rods uh, as standoffs um, that um, that made it possible to adjust the height uh, to the correct uh, to, um, to the correct one uh, that I needed while also being quite cheap <laughs> quite cheap and ingenuous the front and back panel then the front panel the original one only had two holes um, on one side for the leds i decided to use it for the back panel and um, drill all the holes for the connectors The, all those binding posts and uh, input sockets and um, the power supply cord also made a um, design uh, on uh, on uh, the, the projection foil. Earlier I used uh, sticky foil printed it with uh, a laser printer but uh, turned out that uh, the sticky foil didn't really work um, with the parts uh, that uh, screwed on like like the binding post it looked uh, quite ugly when uh, when i attached them those um, binding posts I replaced the, the thing with uh, projection foil and uh, polymer glue to attach it to the metal. Then I applied uh, some uh, clear varnish, uh, some coating. The, the plate on the power supply, it's still the sticky foil. The, the old um, design. I think it looks quite nice, so I decided to left it, to leave it uh, alone. As for uh, as for painting the enclosure, I did it after 
putting uh, putting it together for the enclosure of this amplifier i used a uh, plastic booth as a uh, project box um, that i w could buy in an electronics parts shop i um, used it uh, to cover the protruding parts like um, the control pcb and uh, the output transformers made a uh, rectangular hole uh, through the box and through the chassis so that uh, the top part uh, with the booth attached uh, could uh, go over the, the bottom part, the transformers and the sub-chassis and uh, the amplifier is closed and uh, I also wanted to avoid um, any mounting f holes for the tube bases, any visible screws. That's uh, one uh, thing, uh, one reason uh, I went with uh, the sub chassis construction. The other reason was uh, that. Uh, if I did uh, a sub chassis and uh, had the electrical assembly in one piece, not uh, on the detachable upper part, I would be able to test it and tweak it uh, without uh, the whole enclosure. I wouldn't really have to have the enclosure when making the amplifier run and sound as, uh, as it should. Of course, uh, I did some uh, debugging on this amp uh, with, the, with the bottom part, but not the top part. And uh, that's also gonna be quite a learning experience for my uh, future projects. Uh, I'm uh, having a, a uh, 6080 WA uh, push-pull amp uh, in mind with a uh, sub-chassis uh, construction and, uh, and the top plate um, on the outside. And uh, also, uh, I, uh, I could uh, do all the internal assembly without uh, any fear of, uh, of damaging the metal plates uh, I was doing the internal assembly on. If I uh, were to do it on uh, the chassis proper, it... Uh, it would take uh, a lot of uh, extra caution from me not to damage uh, anything, clumsy as I am, because I am quite clumsy and uh, that's, uh, that's why I have to minimize uh, the, the risk of, uh, of scratching anything. Finding some clever ways to do that. Also for some clever ways. Then the prototyping phase. I, I did a uh, prototype uh, on a real dear breadboard. <laughs> one third of a breadboard because I had one that uh, broke uh, in, uh, into one third and two thirds. The remaining two-thirds part uh, is the base for the bench laptop. <laughs> Nothing goes to waste. And I will of course reuse uh, the prototyping assembly for some future projects of mine. I'm, uh, I'm thinking about building the, the Karim in first on uh, on the prototyping uh, assembly and then uh, in the proper enclosure. A quick, uh, quick and dirty but quite useful 
solution for prototyping vacuum tube circuits in my lab. And uh, there's also the story of um, of the control circuit, um, the remote control, because my customer wanted to have uh, a remotely controlled uh, volume pot. He pointed me to some uh, kits uh, from uh, AVT. It's a uh, Polish company that. Uh, Source uh, kits for self assembly and uh, also uh, publishes uh, a bunch of uh, electronics uh, and uh, science and technology magazines. Uh, I like them uh, quite a lot. Learned from uh, from one or two. Have uh, have some fun memories. And. Um, I uh, decided not to buy a kit, but uh, recreate the design uh, on uh, on my own board. It's a one-off project, so I did go with um, a strip board or perf board. Also uh, modified the design uh, to use an uh, motor driver chip uh, L293D instead of um, discrete transistors and it worked and uh, I also decided uh, to use um, then the control output because um, the kit, the design uh, had uh, a control output uh, presumably for switching the amplifier on and off and I decided to use it for switching between the RCI input jacks um, and uh, the Bluetooth interface. And uh, the only thing I will have to do is getting a uh, RC5 um, supporting um, remote control and uh, program the amplifier for using that remote. It can be done uh, in uh, in the circuit uh, without having to modify anything the original design uh, used a uh, jumper that uh, shorts the um, infrared sensor to the ground and uh, that's how the microcontroller knows that um, it's in the programming mode and uh, when this happens uh, it will turn the volume pot in one direction slightly to indicate uh, the function that uh, the user is supposed to enter from the remote control and uh, after that happens uh, it will um, turn the pot in the opposite direction and the user has to enter the the opposite direction uh, function like uh, like when uh, when the first one was uh, volume down then the next one will be volume up and uh, and then the relay control and uh, there was a little design challenge uh, for the programming mode how to how to put uh, the amplifier control board uh, in the programming mode without having to use uh, any buttons uh, that would be accessible from uh, outside of um, the amplifier because uh, that would uh, that would mean that uh, first uh, you could uh, accidentally put it into the programming mode uh, without uh, without an intent to do that and uh, second uh, it would uh, kind of break the aesthetics uh, unless I did it on the 
back panel or some back part of uh, of the amplifier. I didn't want that. After some thinking, I was uh, I uh, I just uh, decided to use a reed switch like uh, from those old uh, telecommunication relays. And uh, this one worked quite, quite nicely. Let me show you. Got a neodymium magnet from an old HDD. And if you put the magnet uh, against uh, the front uh, of, uh, of, the, of the booth, switch the power on, the potentiometer will turn slightly to one side. See? It turned. Alright, let's try again to see if it was not a fluke. And it did. So, another problem solved. And of course, uh, I will inform uh, the customer how to do this, how to put the amp into the programming mode, how to set it up. And uh, and there was uh, also a little problem uh, that I encountered uh, making this uh, remote control because I tried to use an uh, 80 tiny 13 and uh, the code blob um, then the hex uh, it was compared for 80 tiny 45 didn't want to work uh, if I tried to upload it to 13 with an uh, AVR dude uh, program and uh, Arduino as uh, an uh, ISP. So uh, I had to get um, the 45 and after some initial problems uh, with uh, uploading it it went uh, quite well and uh, and you saw the um, the result <laughs> and uh, then there's the story of um, the power supply uses a uh, five connector plug uh, that was uh, quite popular in uh, old Polish uh, professional electronics mostly for the test equipment it can withstand uh, a few hundreds volts um, so it would be perfect for the, the tube amplifier and I also used uh, the same uh, style of plug uh, on the headphone amplifier that I was building. Still gotta make a uh, power supply for that one. And uh, the enclosure for the power supply, uh, it was an enclosure for an from an uh, old uh, Polish uh, safety transformer that's the step down uh, transformer that uh, lowers the voltage to 24 volts with some uh, extra insulation some extra separation like uh, like the split uh, the, the split bobbin, the, the split spool and uh, I, uh, I got that one and uh, used the 
enclosure painting it uh, like uh, like the rest in uh, in that lovely red also used a uh, steel plate uh, inside uh, the power supply box uh, on uh, on the top um, the, and the transformers uh, on the bottom the um, full bridge rectifiers and uh, and the filters and uh, because I had uh, a lot of uh, low voltage uh, step down transformers like to 12 volts like to to 15 volts I connected uh, two of them back to back a larger toroidal transformer something like uh, 60 volt ampere for stepping down from the mains voltage and uh, a smaller one uh, something like 40 or, or 30 volt ampere to step it up to the, the value something like uh, 180 that I would need for the <coughs> B plus voltage and it works quite nicely with an uh, additional uh, advantage uh, of uh, having low volts uh, DC to the amplifier so that I could use uh, a 7805 um, IC to get the power for the control circuitry and the Bluetooth module and uh, I decided to wire the tube heaters uh, in parallel one group for the EL84s and um, the other group for the E88CCs and it works quite nicely without uh, having to use uh, any purpose-built uh, transformer and without having to run uh, larger currents um, that uh, I would deal with uh, if I were to use uh, 6.3 volts uh, on the heaters it's just uh, half as much uh, current than I uh, would have to use for the 6.3 which is still nice uh, like I had some transformers and um, designed the circuit around uh, what I had <laughs> doing electronics on a budget tighter than Ethel Granger slices that's what I am here for and that was the story behind the little red devil and uh, I guess I will also share some uh, stories of uh, of the future amplifiers of uh, all the design challenges um, I will have to deal with when, uh, when designing and making them. See you!